Hey guys, how are you? I am Andre C. Hatchett of BlackMenDoingIt.com. Here we have the lovely Nobelenga Moses of SuccessfulBlackWoman.com. How are you, ma'am? I'm doing great, Andre. How are you? Doing great. Thank you for joining us. And thank you guys for tuning in. Here we have an interesting <laughs> discussion to talk about today. So there's a brother, Darnell Keyes. He's trying to raise $7,000 via GoFundMe so we can help him throw his dream wedding for his wife, for his lovely bride-to-be. Um, I was caught off guard by that. I, I was caught off guard for, for, for numerous reasons, but I'd love to hear your take on this whole Um, Okay, so here's the thing. Um, I actually saw this GoFundMe posted on one of my Facebook friends' pages, and she was also kind of having the same reaction as you. I'm like, what? He wants us to pay for her dream wedding or their dream wedding? Um, and I commented and I said something to the effect of, look, this is simple, okay? Um, if he cannot afford a wedding, he cannot afford to be married to this woman. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. The second thing is he should not be marrying a woman if he does not have the good sense to recognize that he can't afford a wedding. And she should also know that if she's marrying this man, she's marrying somebody who's not in a position to lead and make sound decisions. If you mm. can't recognize that he can't afford a wedding and then has the audacity to ask other people to fund it, there's already a problem. And that problem, I know, is going to bite her in the you-know-what later down the line. And it's not just people. It, 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 it's public. It's not his brother. It's not family, yeah. It's not his attorney frat brother. It's not his dad. It's mm -hmm. anybody. Mm -hmm. and when I saw that, I'm like, that's that's kind of a lack of shame. I I, I would be embarrassed. I, I, I would love to say that, that that I've never borrowed money from anybody before, but that would be a lie. I have. I, I paid it back. I'm so loaned a lot, a lot of money, giving away a lot of money. But there's something you just kind of keep in house, and you don't for, for the simple shame factor is I don't need everybody knowing this. I don't need everybody knowing this. So my take was not that. That brother doesn't have the seven grand or so, but the way he's going about it is just totally like, yo, dude, like you have to have some level of shame in your game. You have to have some level of shame. Everyone doesn't need to do everything. And it's a wedding, right? So I know my little sister, uh, my little sister, Chelsea Brown, she's 29. Her and her husband got married at City Hall about two or three weeks ago. And after that, we went out to eat at a restaurant. And they're done. And they went to Virginia Beach for their honeymoon before they got married, before they got married, because they both off of work. Done deal. That did not cost seven grand. Let's not even say the trip, everything with the dresses might have cost a thousand dollars with everything. Done deal. Right. Why does the wedding have to if you can't afford the wedding, don't do that kind of wedding. What's your take on that? Right. You see, here's the thing. Um, he, 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 you know, he pulls out our emotions. He talks about, oh, she's such a wonderful person. And, you know, she wants this and she deserves this. Um, that should be a clue that if she wants all this and you can't provide it for her, then you're not the brother for her. That's deep. If you, if you think she deserves it, then bow out. If you think she deserves all that and you can see that you're not in a position to give it to her, bow out. I could tell you, you know, 11 years down the line, I've been married 11 years. Um, if, if something seems like a small issue in the beginning, give it 5, 10, 15, 20 years, it'll only magnify. It'll only magnify down the line. Yeah. So that leads into another point. Piggyback on our, on our good friend, on Darnell Keys here. How much money should a man have to be married? What, what is the minimum? What kind of discussion should be had? Should he make more than his lady? All these things need to be talked about up front. And I bet they didn't talk about any of these things up front. You know, I don't know the couple. I'm just responding to this GoFundMe. Um, I don't believe in this uh, rhetoric that, you know, um, we can't afford kids. We can't afford to be married, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think we should put a dollar value on family. I think that if you have two people who are willing to commit to each other, work together, build a family, build a legacy, and build wealth, that is okay with me. I'm not putting a, a dollar value on that. However, um, I think it's important to recognize you can't take a, a, a poor person or a pauper 
um, and then pick out a princess and bring her to the poorhouse. That's not going to work. Mm. <laughs> especially, especially if she didn't agree to that and she's not aware of what she's signing up for. But at the same time, um, maybe that's what she wants. Maybe she doesn't want to be a princess anymore. She wants to be in the poorhouse because love is important and all this other stuff um, that people say. But I will say this. If you can't meet the basic needs of putting a roof over the head uh, of that person, putting some meals on the table, um, you know, maybe wait a while and figure that part out first. And then... I'm in total agreement with that. I, I, I'm in total agreement with that. Um, I, me personally... I wouldn't get married until I had enough money to pay for our living situations and food for the month. I think everything else is a very nice bonus. Right. But I think for me personally, like that's the mandatory minimum to be able to pay for the vehicles, um, the mortgage, and the food. Right. Uh, I, I want to do more, and I'm sure we'll be able to do more, but that's the bare line minimum. And I wonder with a lot of brothers, what is the bare line minimum and what it should be? Should be what I just stated. I don't know. I don't know. I, I think it should be something close to that. Um, you know, Andre, sometimes it just depends. You know, I've always been the kind of woman who didn't, even though I have a strong belief that a man, I, as I say it all the time, it's his responsibility, his duty, and his calling to protect and to provide. I know that not everybody agrees with me on that, and that's okay. The one I'm with does. And that's what counts. That's what matters. And that's how my father raised me, and that's the example that he set. Mm. Now, if you meet a woman and you want to be partners in your money making or whatever, and again, that's the situation I had. When I was getting married, we didn't have that kind of, you're going to make all the money and I'm going to sit here and spend it. Because uh, first of all, we didn't have any kids. Um, but it can, it can evolve, it can change or whatever. However... Um, I don't think that a woman should ever put herself in a position to be with a man who does not have the full confidence that if push came to shove, he'd be able to get up on his feet, provide for his family, and protect his family. It could look different for different people. You know, I'm from Botswana. In Botswana, maybe a little mud hut and... Um, <laughs> no, no, if she, again, if she's from the village, okay, and you're from the village, a little mud hut might cut it, Okay. Um, if she's from the city and she's more accustomed to, you know, brick, brick and cement and electricity and Wi-Fi or whatever, again, I'm not saying we should put a monetary value on that. I'm just saying that there's a basic principle in place that the man should, you know, protect his family and provide for his family. And I think there should be hardcore conversations up front. Hardcore conversation. Okay, here's what I have. Here's what I'm. Here's my goal. Here's the plans. Here's how I'm going to get there. Does that work for you? Does that work for you dating, um, being engaged, and does your marriage requirement change? Hardcore conversations can end a lot of relationships early, early on and can avoid us getting divorced and can say, okay, it, and it can help us adjust our expectations. Um, a woman might say, you know what, that's not ideal for me, but I thank you for saying those things, for stating what where you're at with your situation and i think that works for me so let's go ahead and move forward with this i'm i'm big on the hardcore conversation get the uncomfortable stuff out the way early here's where i'm at here's what i can do does that work for you queen and if it does then we take it from there. um absolutely i think it's uh, about the mindset you know yeah. um you can quickly tell um a person where they're going to go, the trajectory that their life is going to take based on their mindset. Again, for me, I, I really, I honestly did not care when I um, thought about getting married. I didn't care how much money he had or didn't have or all that kind of stuff. I really didn't care. Mm -hmm. But I cared about the mindset. You know, is he accountable? Is he responsible? Yeah. Is he resourceful? Is he willing to work? And if it gets weird or funny or whatever, is he going to cry mommy or is he going to stand up and be a man? Again, those are my preferences. That's how yeah. I was raised, and that's what I believe. Um, and by stand up, and by, no, 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 like, am I, am I stand up and being a man? Uh, um, I'm considering you mean like doing an extra shift, driving Uber, whatever driving Whatever it Uber, takes, and that's driving, just the thing. Whatever do it, whatever it takes. Yeah, do whatever it takes. If you got to go flip burgers at McDonald's for a month, so be it. I would never point and say, oh, look at you. You're just a burger flipper. No. I'm so, wow, look at my man go. He does what it takes. 
you know, um, and, and, and I'm right there, okay? Now, if he's planning on flipping burgers for the rest of his life, we might have a problem, okay? But, that might not work. But I'm saying, I'm just being honest here, okay? Um, and not, there's nothing wrong with the brother who, who, who uh, flips burgers all his life, so, so be it, but he's just not for me. Bingo, bingo. Okay. And I think we, 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 we hit the key point there is it's not about the pretty job or the pretty business or the corporate stuff. It's about manhood and our viewpoints um, um, where Lionel's one, I believe, is doing what you have to do to, to maintain our, um, a healthy relationship for you and your queen and your household. Right. Burgers, Uber, Uber, Walmart, doesn't friggin' matter. Right. Because the feeling of getting a paycheck and the feeling of trying your best to hold down your household beats the fulfillment of saying, honey, I don't have it and I don't know when I'm going to have it. Right. Um, and, and, yeah. and there it is. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. We're in total agreement. And the thing is, the Walmart, Uber, Burger King, or whatever it is, those are putting out fires. You see what I'm saying? It's a band aid. But yeah. let's stop the blood running and mm -hmm. then let's figure something out. Now, if it's band aids all through your life, I'm sorry, I can't deal with that. <laughs> or putting out fires all day, every day, forever. I can't do that either. Um, mm. So it's a matter of just doing what's necessary. And I'm the same way in terms of um, womanhood. I think that it's up to me to make sure that my family is also uh, taken care of in every way possible where, where necessary. It's, oh, it's, a, it's a mindset that we both have um, and that it's a partnership. So nobody should ever point a finger at the other person and say, you know, you should this or you should that. But at the same time, we have to have a mindset and understand that we have to do whatever it takes to keep the family safe, to keep them financially stable um, and moving ahead and progressing. That's the bottom line. Do what you have to do to get where you got to get. Uh, that's manhood and brother with the ring uh, That's for the wedding. I wouldn't advise to do that. I would advise to fall back, readjust your, where you're at with things. And if you can't afford it, you can't afford it. C courthouse weddings are cool. I have a big wedding in two to three years, but it's the mindset and, and what, and what, and what, and what articles and things like that, where we're seeing a mindset of, okay, brother, like, what are you doing to get this? What are you doing to make this happen? Um, and, and we're not seeing it from the articles. So brothers get out there, get busy. Burgers, Burger King, Mickey D's, it doesn't freaking matter. It's better than, being without. Thank you. I know you have to go. So how can people find you again? What are your platforms? Um, I'm at SuccessfulBlackWoman.com. And um, if you want to follow me on Facebook, it's uh, my full name, Noma Langham Sally Moses. I have a page there. Um, and at Twitter, I'm Noma Unlimited. And you have some courses for sale, right, uh, at the Black Business School? I do have. I do have the homeschool guide um, for parents who want to, you know, kind of transition their kids from public school into um, into private school, really. Homeschool is private school. Yeah. Um, and that's just really piggybacks on our conversation. You know, I did what I had to do. My kids were not getting an adequate education, and I did what I had to do. I took them out of school, and I created a homeschool for them. And four years down the line, here we are. It's working. It works. It works. You guys can check me out at theblackrealestateschool.com, theblackrealestateschool.com, and the notarybusinessschool.com as well. Have a great day, Loma Lenga. We'll talk soon. Thank you, Andre. My pleasure. Bye-bye.